Okay, now doing the patent part of it, uh, I didn't know very much pat about patents, but I did go online and get a lot of information online concerning patents. And uh, you can do that too, and it's helpful. Now, this was around uh, February or March of 2020. COVID had kind of kicked in, but I was still plugging away trying to come up with these ideas. Um, as I set up my business and everything, I contacted a local patent attorney and had that firm actually set up my LLC, Limited Liability Company, with the state of Tennessee, get my IRS uh, tax ID number and all of that stuff. I set up my bank account with the local bank and everything and um, opened up all these other accounts. At the same time, I uh, looked into patent the patent process, you can file a patent yourself. And a lot of people will do this. And there are some uh, YouTube videos out there of people that will explain how you can do it. But I thought, well, right now I'm very busy. I don't have a lot of time to fool around with this. I'll hire somebody, let them do it. And that way I, I'll know it's done right and I can move on. So, at the same time, I, and then I started working on the patent. And uh, the patent for the helping hand was uh, pretty involved. There were a lot of drawings that I had to do. As you can see here, these are drawings of the different components. Some of the different components of the helping hand. And... I had to draw all of these by hand. A lot of times I'd take a picture and then trace the picture um, using a tracing board, a light board as a background to trace these different parts. Then I would have to put identifying markings and so forth on them and um, so that in the descriptions, I could describe what all of these components are and uh, how they work together. And this is some of the descriptive stuff where I'm referencing all of those different uh, figures and uh, identifiers and so forth. So this was all part of the process. And this is the actual patent application for uh, the helping hand. This was for the helping hand. So this was done, part of the work. But what happened in March and April when I was in the middle of doing all these drawings, it was taking so much time for me to do those drawings and sketches and writing up all the stuff and categorizing it and at the same time trying to uh, make the parts and test them and get them to work together and I started thinking this is a very complicated uh, invention or device that I'm trying to make uh, to go out to the public there are so many parts there's electronics involved soldering components um, and at the same time, I was thinking, well, how many people would have a use for this helping hand device? And I found there were a limited number of people because it would have to be someone, first of all, that could afford to buy something like that because I figured this product, by the time you started adding all of the various attachments and stuff, could run anywhere from 60 uh, or $70 to maybe $200. And uh, that's quite an investment unless it can really help a person a lot. And I went to Hobby Lobby, went down every aisle, spent hours looking at different hobbies and stuff and trying to envision how my product might be able to help those hobbyists 
do different tasks. And uh, then I took that process and that helped me design some of the attachments and so forth. So all of this was going through my head and I thought, man, I've created a monster here. It's going to take me forever to get this thing patented, to actually get it in production and everything else. And I said, why couldn't I have thought of something simple like a chip clip where you open up a bag of potato chips and you roll them up and put a clip on it? That'd be a simple, easy thing to make. Why didn't I think of something like that? And I started thinking, well, maybe there is something simpler that I could do that I could actually get out there and get on the market quick and get a, uh, something going with it. And I was thinking, okay, here's the COVID virus. Uh, what's going on with COVID? Um, well, and for some reason, I started thinking of college campuses or high school campuses where kids were uh, uh, going to school. And at that time, in the early stages of COVID, you thought that, well, the last place you want to be is in a crowded cafeteria or restaurant eating. And I thought, hmm, maybe um, if they could, if they had some way of eating their lunch uh, outside the cafeteria, but it's hard to find a park bench or a table or something like that, just um, on a campus. And that's when the lap diner started becoming a thought process of mine. I thought, you know, if there was something compact about the size of a book that would fit in a backpack, and uh, these kids could have that device in their backpack with their books, and they could go to a uh, drive through a food truck, um, or go through the cafeteria and get their lunch, and then go outside and sit down on a park bench, a stool, a rock, a retaining wall, on steps, anywhere they could sit, they could take this device and uh, then just simply open it up and pull their belt out take the this part out where they could put their drink in there and put this around their leg uh, and tighten it up with the belt like a seat belt and have this level platform that they could eat on and uh, have their food. So that's where I came up with the idea. And then, of course, once I came up with the idea, I had to figure out how to make this retractable thing, how to make this open and close and hinge, how to attach the belt to it to where it would be stable and so forth what kind of belt, um, where I'd get this material, what kind of a, uh, a seat belt thing I would get that would work with it. So I had all of that to figure out. But it was a simple thing. No electronics, not a lot of parts involved. So I thought, well, let's, let's go with that. So I did. And my very first patent that I applied for was for the lap diner. That device. I came up with that device and there weren't as many drawings involved. Basically the drawing of the lap diner, the parts that go into making it, the strap holders, the uh, now, let's see, there's another page here. The cup holder part. The two pieces that form the tray, that fold out into the tray. And uh, the way they hinge together. And uh, of 
course, the basic concept of how it attaches to a person's leg. So all of this was stuff that I had to put together along with descriptions and so forth. And this is the actual patent application and uh, provisional patent that I have on that lap diner. So I went ahead and got that and thought, okay, this will get me started. And then I went back and continued working on the helping hand and got that patent a little bit later. Now, a little bit about uh, cost. A lot of you uh, that are thinking about getting into a business, uh, coming up with the ideas and everything, I'm trying to tell you how I did it and what my process was and at what point I decided to come up with a business and all the things involved in coming up with that business name and even more recently coming up with a logo for that business. But the, the cost information, and I think I have it here, for example, with the lap diner, um, it cost me, pardon me, eight hundred and twenty-two dollars and fifty cents to um, file that patent, and that was going through a local patent attorney and having them actually do the filing. I still did all the drawings and did all the descriptive text and everything myself, but they actually went through the process of getting it together and advised me on a couple of things um, that I needed to uh, embellish or put a little more detail into. And uh, once I got that right, then they charged me $682.50 for their uh, advising me and actually taking this together and doing the filing and everything with the patent office. There was also a $140 um, fee with the patent office to file it. So if I had filed it myself, it would have cost me $140 instead of 822. If you decide to file a patent yourself, and I'd advise you, if you can afford um, the $140, and you can even get it less than that, uh, I think you can file a patent for um, about $75, or maybe less. You can go online and find out, I can't remember. But since I was getting out of the construction business, I sold uh, several houses that I still had that last year. And it put me in an income level where I had to pay the full $140. But if your income uh, was below a certain level, um, then you can file it for a lot less than that. So I would advise anyone to try to file one yourself. Just see how it goes. Um, maybe take something, if it's really something serious that you think might take off, maybe you, you need to, if you don't know what you're doing, maybe you need to get some help. <clears throat> but um, I'm going to try to file a couple patents on my own myself just uh, so I can see how the process works and I'll file them on some things that I don't necessarily think are relevant, but they might be, but it would give me some experience. So that's a little bit about uh, the patent portion of it. And it was after I had already done these things, uh, I already had the patent for the lap diner um, when I s started my YouTube channel but the patent for the uh, Helping Hand came in after I'd started the YouTube channel. So I started doing some YouTubes on more on the business, like this one, uh, where 
I try to help people understand the process and what some of the costs are. Now, uh, that gives you an idea of the cost and what's involved in doing uh, the provisional patents. And then you have a year, and if your products look good after a year or promising, then you can do a utility patent. It's going to cost you a little more money, especially if you go through an attorney, and because there's a little more involved with, in it, but then that will protect your invention or your product for up to 20 years. So um, that's, that's something that will help you out there. So those are some of the things involved. Now, when you get ready to um, get a patent, I'm going to take the camera here and show you. You can go to the U.S. PTO. Just uh, Google USPTO, United States Patent and Trademark Office. And then when you get there, uh, you get this page. And then you can go down here to uh, looking for patents. And when you get to this page, then you just simply go over here and do a quick search. And in a quick search, you type in something like a food tray. And uh, search for food tray. And computer's a little slow today. And then you've got all these different patents and patent applications for different types of things that relate to food tray. And you click on one of those. And... Um, then you can, when you bring this screen up, then you can go to images and you can actually see that patent application and see what it was for. And this wasn't a very good one, so let me go back and get another one. Um, Let's see what this one looks like. <clears throat> Fortunately, there's a lot of stuff. So what, what you'll want to do is um, look for something that you're going to make. Okay, here we go, food tray. And it describes and shows you a little drawing of what this thing looks like, tells you how it works. So this is actually the patent. Very simple. Some of them just have a single drawing, something very simple. And um, by, by doing that, you can get an idea of what you have to do to create a patent. A patent can be just one page, a simple little sketch. Uh, you don't have to do like I do. You don't have to prove the concept. You don't have to make a prototype or anything. Just an idea in your head, put, sketch it out. And a lot of these patents in here, uh, I found a lot of them, I don't think were ever, nobody ever made one. Somebody just filed that patent so that uh, if anybody ever decided they wanted to make one, they'd have to come to them to get the patent. At least that's my thinking. And uh, so that's a, a little bit about the patent part.